Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. What I thought I'd do today in our third part in our series on foraging mushrooms is just kind of take a look at some of the things that you should steer clear of or stay away from. You know, a lot of people have a phobia when it comes to mushrooms and there's lots and lots of mushrooms out there that can do you harm. They won't all kill you, but many of them can make you very sick and some of them can actually kill you. So there's a few rules of thumb being fairly new at this myself that I stay with when I'm collecting mushrooms that I plan to consume. So let's talk about first, I wanna show you one kind of a poison look-alike, if you will, because I don't think there's a lot of poison look-alikes in the mushroom world that you need to concern yourself with if you stay with some basic rules and stay with some very commonly known mushrooms that are hard to misidentify. The mushroom in the background here is called jack-o'-lantern. And jack-o'-lantern, or false chanterelle, can be mistaken by a beginner for a chanterelle mushroom, and it is poisonous. Is it poisonous enough to do you in? Possibly not, but it's poisonous enough to make you wish it probably had. So let's look at this mushroom for a minute. I'll just pull one right here. And again, you know, you can touch mushrooms that are poisonous. You can actually put them in your mouth and not swallow the meat and put it on your tongue and smush it around. And as long as you don't swallow the meat of the mushroom, it's not going to poison you. However, that doesn't mean that you should just go around putting mushrooms in your mouth either. You should stick with some simple rules. And this mushroom looks very much like a chanterelle and that it has veins that run partially down the stem, but it kind of has a folded cap and it's not opened up like a chanterelle mushroom is. But at a distance or for someone who's just started, it can be mistaken for a chanterelle, which is why it's called a false chanterelle or jack-o'-lantern type mushroom. So this is one that you want to stay away from. You can see it's growing in big, thick patches here with several of them growing on top of each other. It kind of grows in a cluster like this. And chanterelles don't generally do that either. So those are a couple things you can look at. But what I want to talk to you about today is some other mushrooms like Amanita mushrooms, uh, mushrooms that are in the Rusella family that you really want to stay away from, but also just some general characteristics of mushrooms that you want to be on the lookout for and not even take a chance with them, especially as a beginner, because even people who collect mushrooms all the time and are considered mushroom experts get poisoned by mushrooms. So that makes it even more critical for people who are new to the game to be very aware of what they're doing. And there's some things that you can kind of use as generalities of rules to help you avoid that problem. So we're gonna talk about those as we walk through the woods today. Stay with me. Okay, so we looked at that jack-o'-lantern. You saw how they grew in patches. And here is where they kind of grew together. These true chanterelles kind of grow all by themselves, one at a time. And they look completely different if you know what you're looking at. But at the same time, you know, it may not be that difficult to mistake them if you weren't careful. There's a reason it's called a false chanterelle. So I just wanted to show you the edible version of that so that you would understand the difference on camera at the same time. Okay, let's look at this mushroom for a minute. You can see, if I get it in some good light for you here maybe, it's got a yellow top with a bunch of white specks on it. And it's got gills underneath and a veil and a shaggy stem. Now this mushroom is an Amanita species mushroom, and this one is one you definitely do not want to take lightly. There are several species of Amanita in this woods, but those are the psychedelic and the mushrooms that will actually kill you, are Amanita species mushrooms. Most of them have a lot of things in common. Most of them have a veil like this. Most of them have gills. And that's one of the things that I kind of think about when I'm looking at mushrooms and deciding on whether that's a mushroom I want to research or one that I want to take a chance on is does this mushroom have gills? If it's got gills like this, and this mushroom is wide open, okay? It's already dropped its spores. It's on the way out. And we'll kind of look at a couple more examples of this earlier in its life cycle as we go. But if it's got gills, generally I try to stay away from it. And I think that's a good thing to remember when you're first starting out and collecting mushrooms 
because most of the good edible mushrooms that are out there that are considered choice edibles, like your bolets and your chanterelles and your morels and your puff balls and those type mushrooms, oyster mushrooms, don't have gills like this. They have gills that run all the way down the stem or they don't have any gills at all in the case of bolets and things like that. So we're going to stay away from anything that has gills. This Amanita species mushroom contains also the mushrooms called Death Cap and Destroying Angel, which those are the really bad ones. Obviously, you can tell by the name. So we're going to look at a couple other examples of these type mushrooms as we go, because these are the ones we want to steer clear of. One of those Amanitas that we looked at that was wide open, that hasn't opened up all the way yet. You can see it's still closed. It's coming up. And when it opens up, it'll look like that giant one that we looked at. And again, this is an Amanita species mushroom, and it's definitely one that you want to avoid. Here's another Amanita species mushroom. Again, these are those psychedelic ones and the ones that will put you under. You can see the speckles on the top. Generally, that is a sign of an Amanita. It's got those specks on the top, whether it's red or whether it's tan or brown. And again, it's a beautiful mushroom. You can see it's got gills underneath they go way up kind of detached way at the top of the stem there yellow stem red with white specks on top not a friend of the family there these are russula species mushrooms and you can see they don't have the dots on top of them but they're red I find that something chews on these most of the time. I don't find a perfect specimen very often. There's one coming up up here. It's got the top eaten off of it before it even opened up. And there are species of this Rusula that are edible. There's another one right over here. However, most of them are not. So it's another one of those mushrooms I stay away from. And because the Amanita is also red, bright red like that with the white dots, and this Rusula is bright red. I kind of stay away from anything bright red as a general rule. Okay, this is an Amanita mushroom. And it is early in its life cycle. It's come up out of the ground, but it hasn't opened up yet like it will and become flat. And you'll see later on in its life cycle, if we can find another one, where the veil will drop off from protecting the gills and you'll see that veil left on the stem when it opens up to spread its spores. It's a beautiful mushroom, but most of the ones that are poison are. But it's good to be able to identify them throughout their life cycle. Again, this is an Amanita, probably a destroying angel if I had to guess. All right, here's several more Amanitas coming up. There's a really small one that's just come up and you can see these are starting to get larger, these three here. And eventually they'll open up and drop a veil. That veil will drop down and then it will spread open. I try to find you one to spread open out here. The beautiful mushroom, but again, poison beyond poison. You don't want to mess with these at all. Species mushroom, bright yellow to orange, veil, gills, pretty unmistakable mushroom that you shouldn't ever confuse with one of the edible species that we've talked about. But it's good to understand what this looks like so you realize that it is poison. I'll see if we can find a bigger one to look at or something that's in a different part of its life cycle even than this one is. Okay, here's that Amanita, a little bigger in its life cycle. And this is, uh, as far as I can identify it, what they call Amanita cesara. And according to the field guide, Audubon Society Field Guide, it is actually an edible Amanita. However, I default back to, number one, it's got gills. Number two, it's got a veil. Number three, it's an Amanita species mushroom. So I would not even chance it. Okay, guys, well, this has just been another quick vlog style video that we shot out here in the woods while we were looking around at different mushrooms. And what I want you to realize with this whole thing is, you know, I don't think mushrooms are probably worth the risk versus reward in the short term. However, in the long term, 
in a homesteading or a long-term scenario where you're going to live off of what you can find on the landscape and forage, mushrooms have a place for sure. They are both medicinal in some cases, and they have lots of vitamins and minerals in them, as well as proteins. So they are definitely worth understanding. Now, there are mushrooms that gills on them that I do consume. There are mushrooms with gills on them that are edible for sure. So when I say don't mess with mushrooms with gills, I'm talking in the beginning when you first start to learn this stuff. There's general rules that you can stay away from that will make it a lot safer for you to start to learn how to forage mushrooms off the landscape. Stay away from mushrooms that have a veil. Stay away from mushrooms that have gills. Stay away from mushrooms that are very brightly colored in most cases. And when you're looking at mushrooms, make sure that you fully identify the mushroom before you consume it. That is the most important thing to understand. Use one, two, three resources if you can to identify the mushroom before you decide to consume it. And if you do decide to consume the mushroom, keep one mushroom in a cool place that you've not consumed in case you do become ill or sick. Because many mushrooms don't make you sick right off the bat. They make you sick in one to two days, and lots and lots of symptoms can vary, but there are mushrooms out there that attack your liver and things like that that can take several days to several weeks to do you harm. So it's important to understand that as well. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, for all our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends, and I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.